All right. So I want to talk about this article, not because I want to encourage people to eat plant foods for their B12. I don't think this is a good idea necessarily. Um, I think it's quite hard after reading this article, like the options that you would have. But he mentions a couple populations in here that were studied um, who eat very low meat and who don't have B12 deficiency. And because I find like people can't fathom a vegan diet sometimes, some people, like people who are would prefer to be eating all whole foods, sometimes it's hard for them to fathom eating vegan because they need to add in a supplement. <laughs> And, and because it requires a supplement, which technically it doesn't, um, according to these populations. And, and there seems to be other populations in the blue zones that have eaten very little meat at times and survived through it. So there's ways to, to get by without B12 supplements, I suppose, in theory. But I do think they're risky. So that's why I probably would just stick with a supplement. I don't see any problem with it. Um... You know, I think the biggest problem with supplements is overdoing them. So just don't overdo them. Just try to get get it on the mark. But let's talk about a couple populations that ate very low meat and didn't have B12 issues. So this is a study that was done in 2010 on Korean centenarians, people who live to over 100 years old and who ate only small amounts of animal products and had normal vitamin B12 levels. So they measured their B12, the content of the plant foods they were eating, and found many of the fermented foods and seaweeds did contain B12 analogs that they considered to be active. So now B12 can be in an active form and a not active form, and that's the big problem with trying to use plant foods as a source of B12. Um, and some plant foods that have active forms can also sometimes not have active forms depending on um, certain situations of how you grew the plant and like environmental factors and um, like chlorella, for instance, it can either have B12 in it or not because it absorbs it from the environment. It doesn't make it itself. So it depends on the environment. You know what I mean? Depends on what the plant is grown in, depends on lots of different things. And if you're, you know, want to know more about it, I suggest you read this article. I always link my articles in the description. So feel free to read it. But in this case, the centenarians were getting their B12 from their fermented food and seaweeds. Um, you got to watch the seaweed too, because apparently nori once you dry it, can have a lot of inactive forms. But anyway, they determined that the centenarians were getting about 30% of their B12 from plant foods and that it was a physiological, physiologically important amount. This could be the case, especially given that the subjects ate fermented foods at almost every meal, much of which is homemade kimchi that, according to the researchers, is fermented for at least 10 months. So most people, you know, they go to the store, they get their kimchi. It's not fermented 10 months most of the time. And it could even be pasteurized. While the study is very interesting, unless kimchi produced in Western countries is reliably shown to lower MMA levels, it would not be wise to rely on it as a significant source of vitamin B12. So not only should do you need to look at vitamin B12 when you're looking at a, a B12 test, but you also have to check whether your MMA levels are going down um, as well. Because uh, that's an indicator that your B12 status is good. So you don't want, um, even, even if your B12 does show like a high amount, those could be analogs. So you have to also make sure the MMA is going down. So 30% of their B12. Now I'm not sure if he means like 30% and they were eating more B12 than they need, which means the animal protein would be quite low. Or were they only getting 30% of their B12 from plants and then the rest from animals, in which case, you know, their animal content or their the amount of animal foods they were eating could be, you know, probably a piece of meat every day kind of thing. But let's look at another population who eats even like we know how much they were eating. Now, these Iranian villagers 
um, and it was in a study from 1988. They reported a group of vegan, now we'll find out why they're not vegan, but Iranians growing plants in night soil, human manure. So this is not recommended in my opinion. Um, it's, a, it's risky to be growing your vegetables in human manure. Um, there is human manure used in industry, just so you guys know, I do have a video on that. Usually it's like incinerated though. Um, but it is risky if it's not incinerated, especially, which is what you'd need to have B12 in the soil because, you know, there's going to be contamination. You could get sick eating this stuff, but these people have been doing it forever. So they, they know, I think how to do it. They've mastered it. Um, anyway, the vegetables were eaten without being carefully washed <laughs> and the amount of B12 was enough to prevent deficiency. However, for this, okay. So he cites a the wrong paper potentially in that report, but um, he suspects it's from the second report, which was um, these villagers with very little animal product intake, dairy once a week, meat once a month. So that's very, I would say that's pretty much, I would count that as a vegan diet, like not ethically, but like the amount of animal food that they're intaking would not be enough to get certain nutrients that you would need such as B12. And you would definitely not, not be relying on that animal product for protein. So they would have had another source of protein, probably beans or something. And they would be getting their iron and their calcium and all that stuff from other foods, from plant foods, because once a week dairy is not sufficient to, I mean, unless you spend a whole day eating it, it's not really sufficient to get all your calcium, all your, um, your protein. So this is pretty much a vegan diet supplemented with tiny bits of animal product and it had they had normal B12 levels. None had megaloblastic anemia. Their average B12 level was 411, which was quite high considering their diet. The author speculated this could be because their diets, which were very low in protein, allowed for B12 producing bacteria to ascend into the ileum where the B12 could be absorbed. That's almost like SIBO, it sounds like, you know, like I guess SIBO would be when you get too much bacteria in there because I, I'm, I suppose a little bit can leak through, but generally you don't want your bacteria going backwards like that, right? Um, the authors also speculated that because the villagers lived among their farm animals and the yards of the village were littered with manure, they might have picked up enough B12 through contamination. So not a way I would suggest doing it. Um, but the reason I'm pointing these out is because these are pretty much vegan diets with a supplement of B12 that doesn't come from, you know, animal sources there, there's not enough animal sources to get be getting their b12 so it's it looks a lot like a vegan diet with a supplement and so it's not a bad thing to supplement something into your diet it doesn't mean you're replacing an entire food with that supplement it just means that in these cases, people were able to get it from other places. Mike the Vegan actually has a recent video he did um, talking about fermented food potentially being a source. And, and there are potentially some studies coming up that plant food could be a source, but not sure. So don't get hung up on the whole supplement thing because people have survived on these vegan diets. And as we could see in the Korean study, lived into their hundreds with basically like a plant-based diet and a supplement technically in their fermented and seaweed, carefully fermented and traditionally fermented, and they knew what they were doing. Please don't try this. Do not do this at home. I'm just saying, take your supplement. It's okay. It doesn't mean anything bad. People have traditionally done this and their diet was sufficient enough for other all the other nutrients. They just got it from these extra foods, which happen to be plants.